Hi, I'm Marty Nemko. With more time on our hands and more stress in our lives, substance abuse is an increased risk, just as when automotive plants shuttered and opioid use increased greatly. There's no one-size-fits-all approach, as with a headache, the treatment depends on the cause. Of course, there can be more than one cause. The first is boredom. Some of my clients conclude that boredom is a major reason they abuse a substance. That's good news, because that's relatively easy to address. We identify activities that could be more attractive than substance abuse. Often those are solo activities, because a plus of substance abuse is that it can be done alone. Also, clients are more likely to substitute an activity if it's addictive. The kind of person who's addicted to substances is more likely to have a need for addiction. Some of the activities that my clients have successfully substituted include video games, binge watching favorite TV, staying busy with work and family, and maybe surprising, helping others. I've had clients, for example, volunteer at Seven Cups of Tea. You can Google that, you'll find the website. It's a service where anyone can volunteer to listen to callers' problems. A second cause of substance abuse is anxiety. Some people abuse substances to self-medicate their anxiety, which is heightened today by coronavirus fears, real and exaggerated. My first line approach is to ask the client questions such as, let's assume worst case, how would you cope? I'd also ask, let's assume the most likely case, how would you deal? I accompany that by encouraging distraction. I'll say something like, the moment you're aware of the anxiety, redirect to something constructive. That tends to atrophy the memory neurons that are associated with the anxiety. If such purely practical approaches are insufficient, cognitive behavioral therapy may additionally help. Another possible cause of uh, substance abuse is an addictive personality. Genes do predispose a person to addiction, but life can be improved by substituting healthier addictions, perhaps plus cognitive behavioral therapy or a 12-step program. Another cause of um, substance abuse is rebelliousness. Some clients abuse substances at least in part because of rebelliousness against their parents, their partner, or the societal mainstream. Usually they've been rejected by one or more of those, and their abusing substances is a way of preserving their self-esteem by rejecting others' approach to life. Rebellious people may manifest that not just in substance abuse, but in unconventional appearance and in their career or avocational choices. A client of mine comes to mind. Her hair is purple. She has many piercings and tattoos. She's into cosplay, sexual extremism, and brags that she has seen the Rocky Horror Show so many times that she knows most of the dialogue and lyrics. Her favorite is Planet Schmanet, which has lyrics such as, Your apple pie don't taste too nice. A metal mindfuck can be nice. Planet Schmanet, Janet. I usually don't try to get such clients to be more mainstream, but rather, I invite them to channel their rebelliousness into something more constructive than substance abuse. For example, out of the mainstream politics, writing, or visual or performing art. And a final cause of, possible cause of substance abuse is hopelessness. Some people abuse substances because they feel their life is hopeless, so it's not worth taking care of themselves. It feels better to just anesthetize. That's the hardest cause to address. We typically address it a bit at a time. I'll ask the client something like, take the, the aspect of your life that you're most mo motivated to tackle. Maybe it's something you deem easy, like cleaning one corner of one room, or apologizing to a loved one that you've hurt, or reading an article on how to write a LinkedIn profile. When you've done one of those, try one more. That may build momentum. As they say, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. Of course, it would be simplistic, downright Pollyanna-ish of me to assert that a little talk like this can cure a person's substance abuse, let alone amid the coronavirus's added stress and homeboundness. But I'm hoping you'll find at least something here that offers a glimmer. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I'm Marty Nemco. I welcome your thumbs up and I accept your thumbs down. I always look forward to your comments and I love it if you hit the share button below and you share on your social media so that my efforts have broader impact. And I'm flattered if you choose to subscribe to my channel. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemco.